Alright, what's good my people? It's your boy Daniel Fexio. Welcome back to the channel today. I want to do a trade breakdown of this lovely NAS 100 trade that I took. This resulted in a total profit of around five and a half thousand dollars which is a total payout of like $4.2,000 after my profit split. This was on a 200k Alpha Capital Group account. So just over a 2% gain. Lovely trade, all in all, took just over an hour to play out to completion and resulted in a nice payout that I'm currently waiting on right now. So let me go ahead and break it down for you. This is the exact same strategy that I've been teaching for like over the past year now, the same strategy that's in the Indice Bootcamp that I've been teaching in the Mastermind. It's a strategy that I have been preaching that works for literally every single instrument out there to a certain extent that has some decent volume. This is the strategy that I trade and it's a break, retest, continuation strategy just trading a trending market. Very, very simple and it is as follows. Now, initially what I've done is started off in a higher time frame. On the higher time frame, you're always looking to identify two main components, two main factors. is overall market structure, which is obviously the general market structure. That refers to what trend are we in? Are we in an uptrend? Are we in a downtrend? Are we in a consolidation? Now, a little subcategory of that first step it's also how is the volume in the market? Are we in a corrective movement? Are we in an impulsive movement? Because it's possible to be in a trending market, but be in the process of having a corrective or a consolidative movement. So very important to identify the volume. Now I identified the overall based for the past two weeks of price action, we're in a bullish market, price is making higher highs and higher lows continuously. Now the second step in the trading plan is market sentiment. sentiment. What is the current behavior of the market? Right now, what is the most likely candle that is next going to print? Is it going to be a bullish candle? Is it going to be a bearish candle? Is it going to be an indecision, a low volume candle that's kind of uh, going, to, going to consolidate? Now, based off of the overall market structure that I see right here, and based off of the fact that we're in an uptrend, and I can see that based off of this candle that printed on the Thursday, we failed to break the previous structural low. If you look right here to the left, this would technically be previous structure because that would be a high, a low, and this would be the next high movement. Now this big bearish bearish candle that had a huge amount of volume failed to break the structural low. And then the following candle being the Friday, essentially confirmed that this is a level via the wick. It retested and it began to push back up. We attempted to push a little bit higher, not quite enough volume, but the overall idea behind this is price has pushed. We've come back to a key level retested the key level, failed to break lower, and then shown a sentiment or a behavior that we're now ready to push back in the original direction. So overall on a higher time frame, it was pretty clear to me that it was a good probability day to be looking for a buy position. Now that's my higher time frame analysis done. Now the next thing I've done is simply scale down to an hourly time frame. An hourly time frame is good for getting overall behavior, getting a little bit of a better picture of the markets, setting some key levels, setting some targets, and yeah, kind of just getting some additional information. Now, right here on the hourly time frame, what I could see is the last week of price action. We had a large bearish impulsive movement. Now, within this large bearish impulsive movement, what did we do? Well, we left multiple fair value gaps. Now, for all my ICT traders out here, when I talk about FVGs, I'm not necessarily talking about the ICT version of a fair value gap. Yes, technically, this is a fair value gap, and yes, it is an area for price to come and retrace back into. But I just use these words because oftentimes it's a lot easier for some SMC and ICT traders to understand what I'm talking about when I'm referring to price action. But the actual concept of a fair value gap itself is not really relevant. It's just to help you visualize price waves and price movements. It's a harmonic pattern that occurs in the market. Price has a large impulsive push in either direction. And then naturally it has a retracement or a counter trend corrective that pushes back into the previous era that had the large push. In other words, a fair value fill is another way for you to conceptualize it. Now, it's really whatever flows your boat. It's however your mind works, however makes more sense for you. But the only thing you need to understand about right here is we had a large impulsive push away from this area. Price then had a consolidative move or a corrective and it started a little counter trend corrective back up into this fair value. Now, around New York session, what I saw, and bear in mind, New York opened on this candle right here. What I saw is we just had a bullish move back into the previous fair value gap. We then had a little corrective right here for London session, and it looked like we were gathering some liquidity. Price was kind of accumulating, we're moving sideways. There wasn't a whole lot of volume. 
Now the market went ahead and opened up and started to print a little bit of volume around here and we immediately faked to the downside. Now bear in mind there wasn't a whole lot of momentum here for London session so it didn't give me a lot of information about the previous behavior. So what I done is I went ahead and scaled further down into a 15 minute time frame. Now on the 15 minute time frame, what I was simply looking for was a key level. Because on the hourly key level, sorry, on the hourly time frame, there wasn't a super obvious key level to work off of. The only real thing that I could have used was the top of this consolidation. You see where there's four or five candles back to back that have a similar body closure. And if I just drag right here to the left as well, it also lines up with these body closures. That would be my key level, but there's not a whole lot to work with. So scaling into a 15 minute time frame, I was sitting down and really looking for behavior to open up. Now what I noticed right here is a very, very familiar pattern. It's a very common formation. If you've been following my channel or anything that I do for the past like two years, you would have known. This is a very common setup I talk about all the time and it's a three pin breakout. It really commonly occurs on US 30 and NASDAQ just before New York session or sometimes within New York open. And it's a little bullish impulsive move followed by a small counter drain corrective that creates liquidity. So you see right here, we have a little counter drain corrective that retraces the little bullish movement. We then leave this little area of sell side liquidity. Now when I say sell side liquidity, an easy way for you to kind of visualize it and understand what I mean, is it's just an accumulation of loads. Price has stalled out in one area, it's failed to break lower right here. We have a bunch of wicks in the same area. Naturally, you've got a lot of traders who are taking buy positions right here with their stop loss just below these little wicks. In other words, it's a liquidity pool. It's an area that's created some level of liquidity. And then you have one wick or one candle that seems to go just a little bit lower than all the other candles. Essentially, it's like a manipulation movement. It's creating liquidity, it's creating a zone, manipulating the zone, just grabbing and then moving out in the other direction. Anyways, the point is, this is a very, very common piece of behavior that occurs on the three pin breakouts before you have a large impulsive movement. Now, based off of the higher time frame, I knew price was already looking to push in this direction. So I already had my bias for the day. I already had a rough key level. Granted, we were currently below the key level, but from my experience of the market and the experience of trading the indices, I know that this sort of movement is very much manipulation. And I knew that we were looking for a bullish extension. So to me, this further lined up to take a buy position or a bullish trade. Now, what I've done is I scaled even further down into a five minute time frame. At this point, I have my bias, I have my behavior, I have my key level. Simply all I'm looking for is a entry. I need some sort of setup. I need some sort of depletion or a change of character or a continuation candle. Something to let me know I can take the trade and to actually have a valid position. Now I was waiting right here around New York Open. We were forming this little mini three pin breakout. I knew that this movement right here was a manipulation. We were gathering liquidity so we can manipulate and push out in another direction. So I decided to wait for this movement to be finished. Now what happened is we accumulated, we created the sell side liquidity and then right here for 2.30, this is when the stock exchange opens up. Now if you're not familiar with the stock exchange, it always creates a large amount of volume, a large, a large candle print in the market and price tends to take liquidity in either direction. So what happened right here is we opened up for 2.30, price pushed up, we took out this little structural high, we then immediately wick to the downside, we tick out the structural low and the sell side liquidity. And then at that moment, then I started to get really interested to be like, okay, cool. Let me really pay attention and look for an entry. Because I know based off a previous price action and all my years of data collection, that number one, the three pin breakout is a very high probability movement. And commonly when it plays out, it tends to trend for quite a while. And I also know that after stock exchange open, when prices grab liquidity in both directions, it tends to have the actual movement for the day. So that just tends to be the manipulation phase and then the actual movement plays out. And because I was looking for a buy position, after I saw liquidity get, liquidity get taken in both directions, I was like, okay, cool, now it's ready for me to take a trade. So what I was looking for was a simple break and retest and a candle closure above structure. So we had the manipulation, we then had price close above the key level. You see this candle right here, we close above the key level. We have a singular retest candle. Now, ideally, the retest will be an accumulation over a couple of candles. It will be a subtle, slow depletion. But because this is taken just after the stock exchange open, the volume was too high. We had too much momentum in the market for price to accumulate for that long. So I knew a singular retest candle and one long wick with a small body 
was enough confirmation for me to class it as a retest given the current context remember guys context is everything in the market it's wherever you're looking at it it's very very heavily correlated to the time that you're checking price so this was my retest candle and then finally i went ahead and waited for that nice strong sentiment confirmation candle and this was a break of structure in my direction notice how we break this overall structural high up here and we also break the little miniature structural high that's created by this little low candle right here so a nice strong sentiment break and retest again break above the level little tactical retest and then a strong sentiment closure so i went ahead and took that as my entry now granted because the candle was such high volume i was forced to place my stop loss down here which is a pretty wide stop loss ideally i would have had it a little bit tighter but i can't go ahead and just tighten my stop loss for the sake of it I had to put it below the previous structural low which was technically this candle right here so i put it just below the wick now the idea is that if i'm right about the overall trend if i'm right about the higher time frame if i'm right about the current behavior on the hourly if i'm right about the break and retest price should just continue in that direction for at least a couple hundred pips so i can get get my one to two and get out of the market now what i do is again set my stop loss below previous structure which is right here and my take profit is set at a simple one to two and conveniently the one to two is just above the previous structural high now again if we're in a trending market price should at the bare minimum break this structural high to take liquidity and then i can get out my trade take my profit and dip out the market and what does price go ahead and do well it comes up we've got some nice volume literally no retracement candles a tiny bit of a stall out right here and within an hour we come up we hit the one to two i take profit and then price goes ahead and immediately reverses and comes the whole way back down now this trade is also a great example of why you don't get greedy this is why i have my one to two set where it's at you can always target further i can always go for a one to three a one to four a one to five etc but oftentimes in the market it's the greed that messes you up it's you trying to target further that really stitches you up for me personally on my bigger accounts i like to just be consistent i like to make money i like to make payouts i like to make one two percent close the trade get out the market process my payout and actually get paid a lot of you guys sitting at home watching this video don't make money because you go up two, three, four percent on your account, you continue to trade, you continue to take positions, and then you lose the money the market gave to you, and the end of the month in drawdown or at break even when you could have just made one or two or three percent. So this is why I very rarely get greedy and I just take profit when the market gives it to me. So right here there was no actual reason to take profit except because my take profit was at that level. I took a one to two, I was happy with it, and I got out the market, and now I have a four and a half grand payout on the way currently. So that's literally all that goes into it. I'm going to give you guys an update when the payout comes. Um, it should be tomorrow at market open. Today is currently Sunday. So I'm waiting for the payout to come. Um, like I said, a nice four and a half grand. I've just been super consistent with the Alpha Capital Group payouts recently. Again, going for that one, two percent. Um, but yeah, that's the end of the video. Let me guys, um, let me know if you guys enjoyed the video. If you want more trade breakdowns, let me know. I've got a ton more positions I've taken. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys in the comments in a bit. See